people. It's Lloyd from Historic Outdoors. And today we're down in the Annapolis Valley at uh, Fort Anne, and we're going to come inside and check that, that out. That wouldn't have been there back in the day. There may have been a bridge over the culvert we're crossing, but it would have been timber frame if it existed at all. And there's a guy up here in the top of it with a gun with a bayonetty pokey thing that doesn't want you to be up here. Step, step, step. Step, 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 indeed. So you can kind of see that it's kind of star-shaped. That bastion has been cut through to make a road in here. So I don't think that that's original because that originally would have been like a fortified outer bastion. And like I say, there might have been a road through it, but I doubt it. And those uh, stones are probably not original either, but hard to say. Cannons. Come and take it. Another bastion over there. And I doubt that staircase is period to the 17th and 18th centuries. Big defensive ditch, which you don't want to be in under any circumstances. So this is one of the remaining original buildings. And this is, what do they call it, a magazine. So this is like where they stored their gunpowder. And it's kind of built down into a hole here. In the event that it explodes, you want the explosion going mostly upwards in a fireball. Instead of outwards. But what goes up must come down, so if this were to explode... Ideally, these things would vent the gases. But if it did explode, all these bricks and all these timbers would come falling down on people's heads, which would not be much fun. Some repair necessary. But yeah, this is one of the original buildings that's still left here. The other being the barracks across the way. A lot of the other buildings have been demolished. Yeah, so you can see there's like a trench all the way around it. And it's down inside that hole, so. It's cooler and less likely for bad things to occur. A little bit damp, good place to keep beer, but not a good place to keep gunpowder. Smells like your house in here. Smells like my house in here. Are you trying to say that my house smells like a 18th, 17th century black hole?
Wharf down there. Annapolis Basin. Some kind of big cairn with a plaque on it, surrounded by cannonballs. Yeah, this was the original name of the fort. It was called the Scottish Charles Fort, or the Charles Scottish Fort, or whatever. So, Fort Anne was attacked uh, by the French uh, on at least three occasions. All of them I mean, were repulsed. Uh, had a couple of actions. Uh, uh, it didn't really get the name Fort Anne and until the uh, 1800s. Uh, there was a garrison here during the War of 1812, but it really lost its strategic importance by that point. Uh, it dates from uh, the 17th century, and it was originally called uh, the Scottish Charles Fort. One of the more interesting uh, things that happened here was there was a Jesuit missionary um, who uh, stirred up the, the local natives. Um, he thought that they should uh, repulse the British settlers. So there was a lot of uh, strategic geopolitics uh, going on at the time between Britain and France, and uh, the Vatican and the Jesuit missionaries got involved, France being a predominantly Catholic country, and England, of course, uh, being Protestant since the time of Henry VIII. So uh, they used the natives, uh, the local population, uh, in a proxy war against one another. The Jesuit missionaries were the most notorious for doing this. and. Uh, so, a fellow by the name of uh, Father uh, Raleigh, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it anyway, not important, Jesuit missionary, uh, got a bunch of uh, local Abenaki people from uh, the Maine and um, Massachusetts area combined with the, the Mi'kmaq people from uh, here in Nova Scotia and uh, kind of tried to put a stranglehold on uh, the fort behind me and tried to starve it out. Um, they kind of terrorized the local, vision, the local village, uh, burnt down some structures, captured a lot of fishing you know, boats, uh, took some hostages, and uh, killed and wounded a couple of uh, British soldiers. Um, but it was ultimately unsuccessful. Uh, the uh, men inside the fort uh, were able to capture some of the uh, besiegers and uh, brought one of them out and executed him on the spot where a British sergeant had been uh, killed and scalped a few days before and uh, largely the uh, revolt and the attempt to push the settlers out uh, fizzled out at that point. Um, the Jesuit uh, missionary um, met his end down in Maine um, when some uh, New England militia uh, shot and killed him. There's two separate accounts of that. Um, the more dramatic account is the, uh, the French account where they said he uh, was uh, beneath the cross protecting his uh, parishioners and um, was uh, martyred and shot by the by the British as villages and churches burned behind him uh, whereas the uh, account from the New England uh, militia was uh, he was hiding in a in a log cabin uh, reloading his flintlock rifle and um, they went in and shot him while he was reloading um, applying Occam's razor it's probably that the account of the uh, the uh, New England militiamen is, uh, is more accurate uh, given the, the flowery language involved and the fact that there's a, a famous lithograph uh, of the martyring of Father Raleigh's. Um, so anyway, as with uh, propaganda today, uh, it goes back in time thousands of years, so somewhere in the middle is the truth. So we'll never know, but uh, I don't know, the simpler of the two stories uh, seems more uh, believable to me. So anyway, if uh, you like this kind of content, feel free to uh, hit the like button. Uh, if you like the channel, hit subscribe. And I'll do more of this historical stuff from time to time. Leave a comment down below because YouTube likes that. And as always, if you uh, don't like the channel, share it with your enemies. I will punish them for free.